Hello everyone, it's Becca from Becca Books and Bujo, and I have a new obsession. I started and read and finished a whole book yesterday, and I'm kind of obsessed. It has led me down a rabbit hole, and now I want to tell you about it. <laughs> so the book we are discussing, you probably already know by now, is The Idea of You by Robin Lee. Wow. <laughs> it is a romance that just swept me off my feet and I'm totally in love. Some of the reasons I love it. It is about a boy band and it's kind of insinuating it is a certain boy band that I was in love with as a teenager. One Direction. Of course it's different and has different names and boys, but it's kind of One Direction. It also is just every woman's fantasy, if they like men. <laughs> and that is you fall in love with one of the boys in the band. So, I was obsessed yesterday. I then realized it was being turned into a movie, releasing next week, for goodness sake. And uh, it just reminded me of my love for One Direction, or the love I used to have. I mean, I did watch about two hours of videos of One Direction today, so maybe the love is still there. But I just don't know who to gush about this book to, and uh, that's where you come in. So thank you for <laughs> sticking around for this video if you want to. So um, yeah, reading the book yesterday wasn't enough. I'm going to read it again, starting today. Like. Literally, I read the whole book yesterday, and I'm going to start it again today. Uh, I immediately went on Pango and bought myself a physical copy because there are quotes I want to highlight, and I want to annotate this book, which, like, who am I? I don't annotate, very often, at least, uh, but I want to with this book. Because, yes, it's a romance, and there are steamy scenes that are enjoyable, but there is a lot to say about relationship having an age gap in your relationship, and also womanhood. Finding out who you are after a broken heart and what you want in your life. So we will be discussing all of that in this vlog, but uh, I just wanted to set you up. It will be me ranting about boy bands. It will be me watching the movie and making comparisons. It will be me obsessing over something maybe a little bit crazy and maybe a book that you don't want to hear about. So you can just pass on by, click to the next video. That's okay with me. But if you like this idea of a book, or if you've read it and want to obsess over it with me, or if you want to chat about the movie release with Anne Hathaway, like a big name, <laughs> then stick around. Let's start reading the book again. So I've just gotten through the first chapter. I guess for the second time, but I want to give you some groundwork for the book. We have Selene. She is a 39 year old mother who is divorced from her husband, her ex-husband, and her ex-husband is dropping off their daughter, Isabel, and saying, sorry, Selene, I can't take the girls to the concert in Las Vegas. Can you do it? He had won this auction of tickets and a meet and greet to meet. August Moon, which is One Direction. It's a British boy band, five young, attractive individuals who are in a band. Anyway, she had plans, but she's like, fine, I don't want to disappoint my daughter. The things mothers do for their children. That's a theme throughout this, <laughs> throughout this book. Um, so she drops her plans. She takes Isabel and her two friends to the August Moon concert in Las Vegas. They live in LA, so it's a flight. They stay at Mandalay Bay, is that what it's called? I don't know Las Vegas. But they get there and they're in this like basement room about to meet the boys. They come in and automatically Slen is like, wow, these are attractive young boys. They're all really tall, um, all very good looking. There's one in particular Hayes Campbell that she finds very attractive. He has great hair. He has great teeth and mouth. <laughs> and she 
first of all, doesn't know who any of these boys are, but Isabel tells them their names before, or tells her mom the names before they go up for the meet and greet. So they get to the front of the line to meet the boys and automatically all the girls rush up, get ready for a picture, talk to them. And Hayes is like, well, what about your big sister? To Isabel and Isabel says that's not my big sister that's my mom he's like your mom they asked how she got roped into coming to this concert and she says Isabel's father got the tickets and Hayes immediately is like Isabel's father but not your husband he is putting on the uh the flirt I don't know if that's a term but uh he is putting it on hard he find Celine just as attractive. So they have this back and forth, this uh, flirtation that obviously Solen is like, this is so inappropriate. She says multiple times, I'm your mother. I'm too old. Like we shouldn't be having this conversation. So the meet and greet is done. Uh, he says, I'm going to invite you backstage after the concert. And she's like, okay, you do that. Thinking, this won't happen. Well, it happened. At the end of the concert, this like big bodyguard comes and he's like, it's one of you, Isabel. They take him backstage. The boys come out freshly showered um, and start hanging out, drinking, talking to the fans, whatever. Hayes immediately goes to Selene, brings her a drink. They start talking and there's definitely flirting. But the whole time Selene is like, we can't even entertain this. This is ridiculous. Um, but she's kind of like, hey, I haven't had a relationship since my ex-husband and this feels kind of nice to be, uh, to be someone's center of attention for a little while. So she just talks to him, whatever. The, the weird thing <laughs> that I um, couldn't get over is the boys, the other boys in the band are like creepily, it's not creepy, I guess, but they're like playing with the girl's hair and like touching them and Solen sees it as affection like but not inappropriate affection just like sweet it feels a little weird to me but whatever they obviously have some age issues with who they see attractive but that's neither here nor there Selene and Hayes leave it because Selene is like I have to get these girls home we have a flight early tomorrow Hayes is like change your flight she's like no little boy no so he ends the conversation with figuring out where she works she is a very high-end art gallery owner and seller she the other thing I wanted to talk about was Selene she has this duty to she feels like to her parents and to her French culture that she uh, needs to hold herself to a higher standard than everybody else. She needs to be poised and elegant at all times. And so, I don't know, I feel like that's a, a big pressure to put on yourself, um, especially when she's had kind of a rough go of it. She got married young, had a child young, wanted to continue her work, but her husband didn't want her to do that. Um, so that's ultimately what led to their divorce but, you know, she's going to let herself go a little wild in this book. But then always have that um, in the back of her mind. Like, I have this uh, elegance to my core. And what is the word I'm looking for? Like, not snootiness, but like, she talks about how her mother has told her, this is who you are. It's a part of your, your core. You need to... I don't know, hold yourself higher than others for some reason. So that's what I got. <laughs> After ranting for six whole minutes about the first chapter, let's keep reading. Great news, everyone. This is the book we've all been waiting for. <laughs> I'm so silly, but I'm still so addicted. I um, am a little bit farther. I don't quite know how far I can look in the book now. Um, Ta-da! The beauty. I can do this. <laughs> anyway, so happy I actually have this copy now. Thank you to Naze. 
so yeah. Let's see, what has happened? Um, they had a lunch date. Before they had the lunch date though, they talked a lot about, um, a lot about Solen's art gallery and how they only represent women and people of color, which is really cool. Uh, she is a very driven woman who didn't want to give up her job for being a mother, which I think a lot of women can relate to. Um, so she had a lunch date with what's his face Hayes and there was definitely some tension some sexual tension between them nothing happened it was just lunch that's what they kept saying over and over again but there was some focus on some lips and some hands and some touching of the hands <laughs> so that was good uh then However many months or weeks later, they met up in New York. That's kind of the cool thing. Each of the chapters are um, prefaced with like where they are. And so it's either LA or Las Vegas. You can see it there. Um, it just feels like you're traveling with them, that the setting is very important as to where they are and when they can actually see each other. Anyway, New York. They have date number two. It's in his hotel room. You can see a little hooligan messing with some clothes down there. <laughs> Nothing happens then either, but later that night in New York, Hayes is invited up. Later that night, Hayes is invited up to Solen's um, hotel room. No clothes come off, but things happen. And that's like the first steamy scene we get. It's good steam, I enjoy it. It's also very good writing. I feel like the author writes the setting very well. She uses beautiful language and like describes people really beautifully. So I'm enjoying that. Okay, so then after New York, he invites her to the south of France, which is where she's from. She has vacationed there. And so she feels comfortable going there. However, she feels this sense of guilt uh, for leaving her daughter, for having an attraction to a 20 year old when she's 40. Um, which, you know, she says, I deserve this. I haven't been with anyone for three so years. Bad. Why can't I have this physical connection with this boy? <laughs> Women can have that too. What? Hold you. I guess Mabel's in on this update. Uh, so then they go to the south of France. More things happen. They explore their physical connection or and they continue to get to know each other. Um, <laughs> Hayes loves how complex Solen is, um, which I think that he's a pretty complex character too. Even though he's 20, he's seen a lot in his years. And um, he's a caring young man. He always, oh. Yeah. Hello. He always uh, stops and asks Solen how she's doing. And he really cares about her happiness. Which is sweet. So, I've got to go. This update isn't going like I planned, but I have the book. I'm very excited to have the book. Hi! Hi! I will now be reading along when I listen. Hi! Hi! I'm home for lunch, so I think I can talk to you without children bugging me today. Uh, I'm a little over 200 pages into the idea of you. And lots of get-togethers have happened. They spend a few days together at a time and then weeks apart and so it's just kind of a blur of all of their time together and um some serious things happen though throughout and that's what i want to kind of touch on now i i have some notes because i just read it so quickly and i don't want to stop every time i have something to say so um there's definitely um, a great relationship between Solène and her daughter, Isabel. And Solène, I was kind of touching on this earlier, she has a lot of guilt with um, being in a relationship with Hayes, especially because Isabel loves August Moon, the band that Hayes is a part of. And she has a lot of guilt being away from Isabel. Mom guilt is a real thing. I experience it on the daily, almost. And... Um, so, Solène tries to make sure that her daughter um, 
feels her love anytime that she can. Um, but when she's away, it makes it really difficult. Um, something happened when Selene was away at one point, Isabel got her period for her first time. And um, that was really traumatic and difficult for Isabel to have to deal with that when Selene was away. And Selene felt horrible that she was off gallivanting in France with Hayes. But at the, at the same time, she is realizing that she is with Hayes because she wants to be. And she can decide that for herself. Uh, she has said um, that she is kind of redefining who she is. She was always Daniel's wife or Isabel's mom or the art gallery owner, but she didn't get to decide who she wanted to be herself. And she's deciding she wants this. She wants to be with Hayes. She enjoys her time with him. Um, she has fun and why can't she have fun? She kind of settled quickly when she was younger, and so she wants to do this, and she's gonna do it. Um, she also just like shows her power in the relationship by saying to Hayes, you have to eventually make a choice that you either pick me and have nobody else, or you're done with me. He is a pop star. He can have any gal he wants. I believe at one point, um, Someone said that women were falling from the sky. They used maybe some more graphic language than that, but women were falling out of the sky for him and uh, Selene had no idea who he was sleeping with and if she was the only one or not. And so she eventually tells him, you need to make a choice and uh, I know what I'm worth. You have to decide that yourself. So I just think Selene is really strong, even though um, people may judge her for this decision that she's making, she's doing it for herself. And um, obviously when you have a child, that becomes a trickier subject because uh, you are not always living for yourself. But her daughter is also a 13 year old girl who um, is going to need to learn that mothers need some time for themselves too and to do things for themselves. Uh, I just have to say the dining room scene if you know, you know. <laughs> Hayes surprises Solen with a beautiful piece of artwork. And then things unfold. Uh, let's see. One thing that made me furious. <laughs> I can't even remember. They're in France for some um, art show. I think it's in France. And Hayes decides that he just doesn't want Solen to work at the art show that day. So he goes and says, I'll buy some artwork so that I can take Solen away for the day. Solen's like, no, I don't want you to do that. This is my job. Let me do my job. And he said, no, I'll buy that piece of artwork. Her partner, uh, have I talked about her? What's her name? Lil, mm, I can't remember. Ooh, that's terrible. She's a great character. Uh, it really supports Solen in what she's doing. Um, but she's like, hey, we're selling artwork to rich white guys. Why not? So she he buys this sixty thousand dollar piece of art, and or sixty thousand euros, ha, and uh, takes her away from her job for the day. And Selena's is pissed, but she isn't as pissed as I think she should be. She is there to work primarily, and she of course is mad. But then Hayes flips it on him and says he's angry and she's like wait 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 you're angry because of what just happened i'm angry because you basically sold me like slavery and he's like no no i'm not buying you for services i'm buying your freedom anyway it um it made me really mad because she is supposed to be this strong single mom who has a wonderful art gallery and makes a name for herself in the art world and yet she allows that to happen she could have at any time so like no i'm not going with you but she still goes with him and has a lovely day in France celebrating the eve of her 40th birthday. Anyway, that made me mad. Uh, let's see. Now, uh, things are getting way more serious for Solène and Hayes. They are catching feelings, definitely. Uh, of course, at the beginning, they're like, nah, that's not gonna happen. And of course it did, because they're both just so phenomenal. <laughs> um, 
but there is some fallout when Solène's people find out who she is with, uh, especially with her daughter, Isabel. Um, Isabel gets really upset, and the way that Hayes handles that is really beautiful and mature, and I definitely understand why Solène likes him. Is not just attracted to him physically, but also how he treats people and um, how he can interact with them. So, yeah, it's like, Solène knew it was gonna happen sometime, so she should have just taken it into her own hands and told the people that needed to know, but they found out in kind of an unfortunate way, and uh, there's fallout for that. So that's kind of where we're at now. Um, I might not even update you until I finish it because it's just so good and I can't stop listening to it. I know I was going to um, highlight and mark this book up, but I've just been listening and haven't had the book in front of me really. So who knows, maybe there'll need to be a third read through at some point. <laughs> I'm ridiculous, I know, but we are two days away from the premiere. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm gonna vlog myself while I watch it because why not? Uh, anyway, I will talk to you in a bit. I think I only have like 20 pages left of The Idea of You, really close to the end, but I just want to come on and say before I finish it off that Robin Lee writes emotions really, really well and super deep conversations like they would actually happen. Um, Solen just had a gut-wrenching conversation with her daughter, with Isabel, about the relationship. It was true, it was real, it was raw, and uh, I felt what each of them was feeling in the conversation. So um, I already know the ending of the book because remember, this is the second time I've read it, uh, but I think it will still hit me in the feels like it did the first time around. So let's finish off the book. Sorry for the things I said I never meant to break you the way you broke In the distance over bridges I hear you Calling out through the smoke And I hold my breath while you Crash in slow motion Didn't look away Should have seen what was coming You stopped running But all I know is a chase I never learned how to stay The truth is I'm no good for you You probably know it by now But in case you don't Or you maybe forgot Give me one more chance And I'll let you down All done. And I love the ending and I hate the ending and that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> I'm very interested to see what the movie does with the ending because I think they might change it. And I don't want them to, but we'll see. Um, yeah, still amazing. Love it. Very good. And I think, yes, it's a love story, but it's a story about Solene finding out who she is, rediscovering herself, and realizing what she deserves so loved it loved it now i just have to wait one full day until i can watch the movie so there's one more day until the idea of you comes out and while i wait to fangirl over nicholas galatzine and this fake pop star i wanted to tell you about 
a real fangirl moment I had with my husband this past weekend. Uh, he did something really, really cool, and I just want to highlight him a little bit. And this is how I thought I could do it. I'm fitting it in, working it in here. Uh, he was chosen to play with the Minnesota Orchestra, which is the professional orchestra in the state of Minnesota. They play at Orchestra Hall in Minneapolis, downtown Minneapolis. And he applied and was chosen to participate in this educators side by side. He got to rehearse with them two times and then perform two concerts with them. He played oboe on Gustav Holst's The Planets, uh, specifically the Jupiter movement. And that piece of music is actually really near and dear to our hearts because I walked down the aisle to him to the chorale in Jupiter. That piece was chosen completely unbeknownst to us and it just happened to be perfect for us. The other thing with the orchestra is that was basically one of our first dates. I met his family on spring break and we went to a concert at Orchestra Hall. So that's a great memory for us. We've gone to Minnesota Orchestra multiple times now since we've been together for 10 plus years. And for him to be able to do this and for the Minnesota Orchestra to highlight educators, music educators specifically, was so wonderful. Uh, it was a great evening. I got to attend on Saturday night with Willie's parents, my parents, uh, my aunt and uncle, Willie's aunt and uncle, my sister. It was just really wonderful uh, in order to celebrate Willie and the other amazing music educators we have in the state. That's my fangirl moment. My husband is a rock star, <laughs> an oboe rock star. <laughs> but uh, yeah, now we just have one more day to wait until the movie comes out. I don't meet people like you very often. Do most people think they already know me? Hayes Campbell? It's not me. I don't know. You didn't seem to care. And for what it's worth, I think we met in a very interesting way. I think you're smart and, you know, you're also just, just you're hot or whatever. <laughs> or whatever. Okay, we're pausing because uh, there are a few things right off the bat I want to address. A lot of, like, three main differences I'm noticing just in, like, the first 20 minutes. They meet at Coachella. That is not true. Um, well, I mean, in the book, they don't. In the movie, they do. In the movie, they have this little meet-cute where they meet in his trailer because she accidentally goes in his trailer. Um... And that is not at all how it goes. Um, he kind of like, in the book, he pinpoints her at a meet and greet that she's at with her 12 year old daughter. That's the other thing. Another difference. Isabel, you know, Isabella, what is her name? Isabel. She's 16 in the movie. In the book, she's 12, which makes it way more different. And in the movie, they explicitly state that Isabel used to be a fan of August Moon, like so seventh grade. So she's no longer a fan. The other thing is uh, Hayes is 24 in the movie, so they're really trying to make this okay. Like make the age gap a little bit closer, make Isabel older, which like has some issues because like a 24 year old and a 16 year old, but that's beside the point. Um, they're trying to make it 
a little bit more normal because in the book Isabel is a diehard Hayes fan and they even say like she was a big Rory fan in the movie so that was a big difference and then the third difference I'm pretty sure um Solen in the movie says that Daniel cheated on her and I don't know if that was the case in the book I think in the book they just grew apart Daniel wanted her to stay home with Isabel and be a stay-at-home mom and Solen didn't want that and so she like fought for herself and decided she was gonna work and Daniel didn't like that I don't think that that led to cheating but correct me if I'm wrong so I'm gonna keep watching because it's still pretty good I love the chemistry between Nicholas and Anne it's a good match <laughs> I just had to pause because <laughs> when she looks up videos of August Moon and is watching them sing and dance, that is like me <laughs> watching One Direction. I just like creepily sometimes watch their videos. <laughs> Another thing with the movie, she goes on tour with him, his European leg of the tour, and I don't, I mean, I realize that they probably couldn't do, like, the segmented time together, especially because, like, they spent time in Tokyo and Paris and Rome, like, they couldn't film all of those places, and just, like, the, it would be discontinuous, but that's what made the book so good and so exciting is because they were apart for like three weeks at a time and then finally got together for like two days and so now in the movie they're spending all of this time together um like weeks together on this tour and i'm not loving it i liked how selene and uh hayes formed their relationship in the book more than in the movie you know what I just realized? They completely got rid of Lolite, who is the um, art gallery owner, or like the co-owner with Solen. She's gone. She's not in the movie. Um, the uh, In the book, their art gallery is called like L uh, Marchand something, Lolite's last name. But in the movie, it's just the Marchand Collective. So they got rid of this amazing character. I loved Lolite. She encouraged Solen, but also like knew what was going on with Solen and how hard this relationship was but was like I don't care about anything else Solen. I care about you and your happiness and I will do whatever for you so um they tried to recreate that character in um Jody I think or I can't remember her name one of Solen's friends, but she wasn't an art collector with her, and she wasn't as spunky and wonderful as Lolite. You can't see, but I was crying. <laughs> the ending. Got me. It definitely was different than the book. Way different. Um, and I don't know if I liked it. Um, but it still made me happy cry. I've just been sitting here thinking about the ending. I didn't, I'm, I'm torn because it was a really good movie, but it does not live up to the book in my eyes. Um, I feel like the relationship wasn't able to, to develop in the way that it did in the book. They didn't even say I love you until like the last 10 minutes and that was like a huge deal in the book of when they said I love you and how they were gonna make that work and the uh, progression of their relationship was just completely different from book to the movie um, yeah I didn't love that and okay the um, epilogue if you will like the the end of the movie I think what made it so beautiful and powerful, the book, so beautiful and powerful, was that 
that epilogue didn't happen. I know that people have wanted their story after the book and that's what the movie gave you, this little five years later thing, but I preferred the book version, I think, even though like, oh, Anne Hathaway's face at the end with the tears in her eyes and the smile, that's what got me, that's what made me cry, but mm, I think I'm gonna need to rewatch it. <laughs> I'm gonna just start from the beginning again, just like I restarted the book, I gotta restart the movie. And then I'll come with some coherent thoughts to wrap up the video. Final thoughts on the idea of you. When it comes to the book versus the movie, the book obviously wins out for me. I feel like the movie took a lot of liberties and actually changed the whole story when I think of it because the way that the book ended needed to happen that way and the movie did it differently. I don't want to go too much more into detail there because it could reveal spoilers, but if you want to talk about it in the comments, I would love to chat about either the book or the movie down there. Let me know if you have read it, seen it, both. I need to chat about this with someone because I'm alone in my little world here. So let me know if you've read it, seen it. Let's chat. Thank you for allowing me to have this obsession and talk about it with somebody. Like this video on your way out, consider subscribing to my channel if you are new here and would like to see more bookish and bullet journaling content from me, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.